What's going on, world? Welcome to the 1,000 Miles Podcast. They say the journey of 1,000 miles starts with a single step. So on this podcast, we go through the single steps business owners, creatives, entrepreneurs, YouTubers, everybody like that goes through on their journey. So maybe you can save some time, some struggle, and maybe get inspired to start walking on your journey. And today on the podcast, we have the one, the only, Peter Lopez. And I'm not even going to try to remember everything that you do or have done. So why don't you take a second and introduce yourself to the people well alex first of all i'm just happy to be here uh in, in this in, in this trying time and and i think that i just appreciate you coming out uh to our uh office here and setting up this this great little uh uh get up i mean stuff is very excellent but at, at its core uh i I've been called a publishing guru. I've had the honor of publishing close to a thousand authors. And within those thousand authors, I've had the ability to uh, launch uh, a lot of their businesses through their book because a book is actually a business. But uh, most of my background is just, uh, you know, branding, uh, creating businesses, pushing people off the cliff and you know, they could fly later on. The key is just to jump <laughs> off that cliff, you know, and Gotta take and that first I, step. I, I talk about my, my 20 year journey, how, how I created my own book, uh, which was successful at its time because it was a book titled Excuses, Excuses, We All Have Them, Which One Is Yours? So that's pretty much, you know, uh, uh, I'm a publisher, uh, branding, and uh, everything from audio, podcasting, uh, and, and 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 soon to be YouTube, and I'm actually hey. using your platform to launch it. You know, hey, so. no, I got no problem with that at all. Yeah. Welcome to the YouTube family. Amen, amen. It's a powerful place to be. I just got religious. I just got so happy. You know what I mean? Hey. Listen, you know, true wisdom is knowing your limitations, and I talk about that. So, you know, I've 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 had success in 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 certain fields, and I've become a master in certain fields, and then in certain fields, I'm just a novice. I'm I'm very ignorant, and and when I connected with you i saw how uh, ahead of the curb you are with the, with, with youtube and, and oh, the branding so i said man let me connect with someone that knows more than me and and then that's true wisdom and you learn a lot quicker by doing that yes and i mean collaboration is very powerful and just being willing to to step in the circles where i, I mean that uh, don't they say that you should never be the smartest person it, in the room that's a problem yeah if you're the smartest yeah. person in the room that's a problem yeah so i mean i, I feel the same way like i i try to meet up with people who have strengths that I don't have yeah. so that either I can pay them to use those strengths exactly. or that they can kind of, you know, rub some of that skill off on me so yeah. that I can level up. It's 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 the mentorship, right? So tr uh, mentorship is wisdom without pain. So if if you find the right mentor or the right coach, uh, it and you collaborate with them, they're going to accelerate you a thousand times or a thousand steps faster than than you doing it yourself. So that's that's the key about collab collaborating with people that know a little bit more than you, so you can kind of break the ceiling and and have those type of coaches that can you know accelerate you to the next level. Right, right, and. So to get back to your history with the, because I mean, I know you do kind of all those yeah. things, the publishing, the coaching, the branding. Um, so what came first for you? Like, were you, were you an author first or were you a publisher first? Was, like, how did you start? I, I started uh, uh, early, early doing radio. I was oh, doing radio okay. like what's about twenty five years ago, and and it was just a, a team of young entrepreneurs and young, excited, uh, uh, passionate people, and and we just wanted to change the world, and we didn't have social media at that time. All we right. had was radio. The, the only way you can accelerate your 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 brand at that time was through media, and it was like old school media. It right. was like where it you was, had that money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to do radio. All you, all you kids out there, uh, I got no. Clue, you don't man. know how you lucky got, you are because like listen he's talking about he's talking about radio being the way like i know y'all probably have never listened to the radio yeah yeah these jits listen you guys to to set this up this up back then back then to set up what you just did today you i also work with tv right so to set this up i want you to understand this you would have to launch a satellite up there in orbit. Then you have to get a studio. So then let's talk about 25 minutes to launch the satellite, another another few million to launch the studio. And then now you're going to have to buy a 50,000 watt antenna, right? Mm -hmm. So all that is going to run you about $50 million. Then you're going to have to get the staff and you're going to get these huge cameras. All that, all that has been, has been now condensed to just a simple iPhone, a couple of cameras and a mixer. That's, that's how... 
powerful the medium has become. But back then, it was just hard hustle. Like, mm-hmm. we're going on the radio. We're giving out the flyers in New York City. I mean, oh, the hustle was yeah. real. So, you know, to, to, every time we did an event, we were just, we were just, this was like guerrilla marketing. It was like, you had to call people. There was no texting. Right. There was beepers. You had a beeper. Uh, and it was I just, mean, but didn't they have sky pages out yet? Where no, you could do man. Th- that's about 88, 89. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, no, like 25 years ago, that's maybe 95. Okay, that's, no. Well, that's so what, 95, So right? let's go 30 years ago. Okay. We're talking about 88, 89. We're talking about, yeah, yeah. That time, you you better have 25 cents and and and, and, and the corner phone and find someone. But yeah, <laughs> I think Skypay just came around 91, 92. Uh, I can't three, remember. Calm, I was so young. Calm. Listen, man. Uh, uh, don't say that right now, man. Don't, don't you dare say that right now. Don't say you were so young. <laughs> <laughs> he go date me. Ninety one. I was in elementary school, <laughs> oh, man. No, that's not even right. <laughs> oh, it's all good, man. So, I mean, just just talking about. So we went from there, and 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 just con- the, everything evolved. Everything evolved. We 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 from there. I I started working within within a, a company called Wave Systems. Okay. And Wave Systems, uh, at at its time, was ahead of its curve. Actually, our our chairman was Nolan Bushnell. You never heard of him, but maybe, but you heard of Atari, mm-hmm. you know, Pong and Chuck E. Cheese. So he was the creator of Atari and what? Chuck E. Cheese. So Nolan Bishno, and then we launched this this DVD ROM technology. I mean, DVD back in the day was like this this thing that went into your computer. So I was an OEM distributor, and then evolved to you know um, um, application service provider, and then it, and then it evolved into just creating. Uh, um, um, channels to to connect with like everything like uh we even worked with e3 sports back in the okay. day and we launched like tiger woods first golf what? and and we wanted to do look at this we wanted to do like these little five minute videos we didn't know how to do that that's what itunes is right now but back then it was just so it, it just technology took it it even though it was accelerating if if talk about 25 years 20 years 10 years the age where we are right now, it's such every day, I think things are being accelerated two, oh, yeah. three years ahead. So I think for an entrepreneur, you're you're most definitely at the right time. I mean, pretty much any any type of, it, it, it's not even just entrepreneur, like whatever type of career that you want to have in this day and time, like it's so available. Yeah. Like the information is out there. The the resources are out there. Like YouTube University is a real thing. Wow. Like like I remember the first time I repaired uh a washing machine. <laughs> like I had a little portable washing machine when I was back when I was in this cheap apartment. Um my mom helped me buy it. Mm-hmm. Uh and and the washing machine broke. It wow. was leaking all over my floor and I'm like I don't have no money to repair nothing. You got the hustle. <laughs> so I looked up on YouTube the type of washing machine yeah. and and like i was able to fix it It was like a loose hose or something but i didn't know nothing about that but the internet <laughs> it's, it's just i think it, it, it and this is my mind like I, i've been talking about this for a long time you you need three people in your life alex i think this is great for, for the audience because I've, I've, I've made so many mistakes not not defining this early in my life so you need you, you need a coach you need a confronter and you need a confidant Right, these three people are going to take you in different levels in your life. So, of course, you know, talked about a coach who's going to just show you the stuff. Like even even now, you're you know, my, uh, you're going to help coach me on on give me some advice on on launching a YouTube channel using oh, yeah. the proper light. So that's coaching. Uh, mentorship, I feel, is more like a, a long term connection. But there's coaches in your life, like assistant coaches, right? Um, and then there's a confidant, someone you can trust and say, "Man, you know, I, I have this idea. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very vulnerable to this, but I need your help because you got to be careful when you when you talk to certain people that right. they start making, they just start mocking you because th- th- we're living in the season of these fake entrepreneurs. You know, I'm, I'm meeting a lot of them that on 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 Instagram they look like they got money and they're showing that they got money. They're showing they have uh, uh, engagement and they really don't like so you want to be with someone you can trust a real entrepreneur a guy that that has done it a guy that has success and failure and he can show the battle scars he can show the scars on his back and he can say these are the necessary steps you have to do so that's a confidant and then you really really need someone to check you you need someone to call you out and say you know what. 
I've been hearing all your BS about getting your webinar done. That's me. <laughs> right. I've been hearing all your, your talking about getting your YouTube done. I've been hearing all your stuff about getting your podcast done. I don't want to hear it anymore. Let's execute that. Let's get it done today because you can literally just go on Anchor, press record, and start your podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. It won't be as professional as you want right. it to be. And that's another thing. It, it, it And that's another thing. I think a lot of people... You know, you said excuses, excuses, yeah, excuses. Yeah. Like that's usually one of the biggest excuses that I think people run into, especially when it comes to creating content. Is that it's like, oh well, it's not it, like it's not professional, mm-hmm. or it's not at a certain level, or it's not a certain level of quality, or what have you, whatever iteration of that you yeah. want to say. But the thing is, and it, as much as it pains me to say this because of what I do, quality doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah no. It, it, Take about listen to a degree. Listen to a degree. Okay, so I, you know, uh, um, um, I've been around talking about quality. It's about talk about the, the, you know, like uh, um, a good friend of mine, uh, Herson. Uh, he he owns a company called uh, Audio Five Books, and he's got like you know the guy that worked with YouTube and and Jack Maldonado who works with the Yankee Broadcast and and all these st- excellent. But sometimes I have to tell him, listen. You know, I know you want quality, but sometimes quantity you have to be, you have to spit it out. And man, he suffers because this dude is a perfectionist, but he gets it also. Like sometimes, you want to be so careful that 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 you don't lose your your sponta- spontaneity and mm-hmm. and just your your connection with trying to be so perfect. Sometimes, like I, I it was funny. I, I in the background, I'm I'm trying to record like three YouTube stories. And the second one came off wrong, but it was authentic. And I was like, let's put that one on. Because when you try to be so so right. so rigid, it's just people are not going to connect with you. Oh, definitely, definitely. I, I think, and I think that's why there's so much opportunity right now. Is yeah. Because, the, it, you know, back in the 80s and the 90s, before all this technology was so accessible, before the internet, you know, just opened this gateway yeah. for people, there was a wall. Yeah. There was this gigantic wall between anybody on the other side of a screen mm. and you. Yes. You know, yes. whether that was whether that was TV, whether that was the movies, whether that was uh, the beginnings of the computer and the Internet. You, you know, there, there was this big wall mm. and, and nobody knew how to get over it. Yeah. Only, like you had to be a member of the secret technological society or somebody rich or, or yeah, you <laughs> like something like that. You had to have the cheat code yeah. to life yeah. to be able to, to get over that wall or through it or know where the secret tunnel was like, it, it, cause normal people yeah. had no access. That's it. Normal people had no way to gain the knowledge to get around that other than to know somebody who already had it. I mean, even when you went to school, like there was still this big, this big wall, this big gap between you being there and getting the knowledge and actually being able to get in the industry. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 you, you said it, you know, back then the access, the access was, was very difficult. You either had to know someone, you had to be legacied into it. Like you've noticed a lot of these announcers had their kids and like, you know, they're, they're all, you know, they're all family. They're all connected broadcast. Now, now you don't really need that. You, you, all you have is a phone and that's the most powerful tool you have because you can actually broadcast from any medium. Like back then you really, or, or, or if you didn't have access, you had to have a lot of money. Right. So it was either, you know, uh, the wall was there. Or you had to like pay yourself to get there. Back then, you know, people that wanted to have access, they would they would pay DJs. They were like, "Hey, I need this record to go on. I needed to drop. I needed to get hot." And they would just go to every record, st- every every studio where there was a, a a radio station, and they would connect with the DJs, and they would pay them a hundred dollars to play that 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 album. Right now, all that middleman, all that wall has been has been taken away. Talk about distribution. Back then, you needed Epic Records to distribute your stuff to the to the bookstores and and the and, and the music stations and Tower Records in Boston, right? In Boston, so you know <laughs> all that distribution now is you have control of that. You have you so you have dis, you have control from from the start to the finish. Right. That that has never happened. Back then, it was like you had so much control 
until you got to a certain place and then the 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 Illuminati or the secret society or the, the handshakers or the gatekeepers say, okay, you could come this far. Now, no, I can I can from from the cradle to the grave, I have control. Oh yeah. And, whether, and it's, whether it's whatever. a book, whether it's a movie, whether it's an album, yes. whether whatever form of medium, uh art, yeah. digital like you you need no one yeah. except your internet provider yeah. to get that stuff out. Well, that, that I guess the internet provider is the middle person now, right? I mean, but but even then, they're <laughs> but, glad to take your money. Exactly. They don't. They're not going to block you. Exactly. It's like, oh, you want an account? Sure. Exactly. What time you want us to come out? So like, it's it's the easiest it's ever been. But yeah. it's but because of that, there's so much more competition and so much more noise out there. You got to be really on your game, or really, you know, you you got to be about your business and ready to work. To make it happen. Alex, you're saying something that, that I talked about my 20-year journey. It took me 1,200 weeks, 89,000 minutes. It took me, you know, 240 months uh, uh, of excuses to, to publish my book. And a lot of people suffer from excuses because eventually, he, he, here's the kicker. If you have to justify your reason more than once, it becomes an excuse. Mm. So there's a lot of people we're talking today. They're listening to us. Listen, we're we're, we're the most. Uh, uh, I, I've never seen this in my life. What's happening right now with this virus? Right. I, I've never I've never uh, uh, been part of this. I, I I was in downtown Boston in 9/11, where we even lost uh, uh, one of our uh, uh, workers there, uh, and that that was hard. But I've never seen this. But I think. We need to stop making excuses. Even from our home right now, we can create content. And some people feel like, well, you know, no one's going to listen to me. Listen, if you got 10 people listening to you, you already have a platform. Right. Because yeah. and, and and to to go back to YouTube, because that was part of our conversation earlier. And, and you know, hopefully we'll be working on some stuff yeah, with, yeah. with that in the near future. Um, you know, once they release us from our <laughs> house arrest. Yes. Um, but people... I think people have lost perspective yeah. when it comes to audience because the like you said if you got 10 people watching a post that's significant. Mm -hmm. Think how many people in their real life in their everyday can't get 10 people to stop and listen or watch or pay attention to what they're doing. Oh. So if you if you take that perspective and then you go and you say okay I put out this YouTube video and I got 50 views why am i not why am i not doing anything it's like dude put 50 people in a room yeah you know and then once you go down the road a little bit more it's like oh that you know maybe you got a, a little bit of a following and now you're like oh my new video only got 500 views yeah, yeah it's like yeah, bro yeah if that was a concert and you were selling tickets oh, you, like you're paid like, right you're paid. right and and i mean of course, you're not getting a large amount of money off of 500 views just because the internet being what it is and YouTube being what it is. But you just got to think about audience in that perspective of the fact that look, look at how many people looked at your content and then put them in a room. Yeah. yeah. Like, and if you actually saw that number of people in real life, you would be amazed at what you just did. And listen, if you could change 10 lives, those 10 lives can change 100 and those 100 could change a 1,000. Like, you have to be uh, aware that if someone is willing to listen to what you have to say, there's value in that. Because sometimes people just don't want to listen to you in your own circle. And and maybe you got to get outside that circle. And, and, and Maybe you're just in the wrong circle. You just you said it right. So, you know, a lot of people stop worrying about what other people have to say. Right. Like that. that I think we, we 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 you know, if you don't define yourself, other people will. And then you live under their definition and under their their codes. I I I. I I, I don't I don't believe that. I said, yeah, I'm telling people just get out. Well, no one's going to listen. Well, if, if it's seven people, great. And that's how you start. Like you said, like, I'm pretty sure, you know, I, I, I'm going to start with maybe 10 subscribers, 100 subscribers. If I hit 200, I'm the happiest person in the world because there's 200 people. Dude, that when I'm I hit my first with. 100 subscribers, it was like, you oh, my party? God, <laughs> dude, it was such a big like that first 100 subscribers on YouTube that is hard wow yeah. it is super hard well I, for me it was super hard yeah. for other people you know maybe they're on a different type of content maybe their their niche is different and so it might be a, an easier journey my first <laughs> subscribers was so hard oh, man, bro. You just, it was so you hard you just grinded you just dude like it took it it took 
ah, I want to say it took a good six months wow. of putting out, I want to say at least two videos a week. Um, and, and that may not sound like a lot to people, but when you're shooting, editing, conceiving like yeah. stuff from scratch and you're doing it week after week, cause I didn't start with a stockpile of content. Wow. Like I, like I had no idea about batching content or doing anything like that at, at that point. Like I was just, all right, I need to get video out. Uh, what am I shoot? Yeah. Uh, what am I do? Uh, let, let, okay, let's cut it. Let's put it out. like. It's a process, wow. and it's a lot of hours. You know, let, let, let's go back to what you said, and and I want to kind of uh, I want to encourage the, the, the listener. And you might be like, "Who the heck is this guy talking?" Uh, stop worrying about the other people. You, like we say that, right? Well, other people, like you said, that and I like that. Like you know what? Like I didn't care. I I did what I had to do because that that uh, those other people is that one point one one zero percent of people that somehow they go on YouTube and they get a million subscribers. I don't know how that happens, but we're, don't worry about the other people. Just be you, because if if if, if you are true to yourself, then no one no one can take that from you. Right, right. Because the truth is undefeated. Like Gary Vee says, like if you're true to yourself, no one can touch that. And 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 I like that about it's 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 just tremendous. Like just looking at, you know, I, I, I'm just gonna share with your audience. You know, when I met you, you're, you're very introvert, right? You're very you're very quiet. You're very oh, calm. Me? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but you know, and um, but just when you get on 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 this medium, you light up. You know, you have this 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 like wait. You know, this guy's calm. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but when you get on, the, so you you don't know. You might have a specific gift that when you get on that camera, you're gonna touch people, and and that's what it's all about. I all I really care about is truly changing lives. You know, I I I've had the honor of publishing these books. I had the honor of pushing people forward. That's all I care about. Because that's the greatest legacy I, I, I want to leave behind that people could say, man, that person said something that touched my life. That's why the podcast that I launched, I've been talking about podcasts for so long. Alex, I mean, I mean, every week I talk about podcasts. And eventually I was like, sat down with, with uh, the um, Audiofy uh, uh, book studio, created everything and said, let's, let's just get it going. And, and the podcast even went to like a uh, uh, top 150 because nice. by just like releasing content, encouraging. And, and the funny thing is there are times I, I just, I feel like I'm blabbering because I try to keep it to eight to 10 minutes because I, I don't okay. think I have more than 10 minutes in, in me. And I just released it. And, and now I'm noticing little every week, like you said, content, content. Every week, they know Monday, Tuesday, the podcast is going to drop. It's called the Peter Lopez No Excuses Podcast. And, and, and I just love the engagement. Man, this, you know, love the show, love the, 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 the content, love how real you are. Uh, I'm not really just you know, uh, trying to make people feel bad. I'm trying to push them forward. And, and that's the awesome part. It's, nice. it's, you know, there, there, there are times I see like so many subscribers and so many downloads. And the times I'm like, man, did anybody even hear this podcast? You know how you see it? You're, right. you're like, man, you, you just yeah. get discouraged. And you're like, you know what? I just got to keep constantly moving forward. All right, well, let me ask you, since we got onto your podcast, uh, wh wh how are you promoting the podcast? What are you doing to get the word out? So, you know, I, 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 the podcast is on, on, on just pretty much all mediums, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Apple, you know, Spotify. It's, it's just w whatever distribution you do. I've noticed right now, when I get the podcast out, I, I, I'm trying to tell people to subscribe. So once they subscribe, they get it. But I'm noticing that if I go on my Instagram stories and I go on my Facebook stories and LinkedIn is like, dude, LinkedIn is like the blue ocean. It, there's so much gold in there. But uh, I'm, I'm promoting it that way. I'm going to do a better job of doing a newsletter and, and like my website, PeterLopezJr.com and have people go there and, and use that as the, the center channel. But just, just going on, on, on Instagram, and, and and just I, I keep it in the stories because I just wanted to be private for, for, for that group of people. Okay. And sometimes I'll just go on, on the actual feed and talk about it. But Instagram and Facebook and I think those two and I've noticed when I when I make the announcement, I, 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 I see the downloads like they, they, they jump up. Nice. If I don't say anything about it. It doesn't jump up. And, and I try to just uh, there's a have you seen that app I use? It's called Headliner. 
I've heard of it. It's pretty I cool. I haven't used you it. You got to try it. So it's Headliner. It's it's free. I like free. Um, <laughs> and actually, it, uh, especially right now. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and it, it creates like a like a like a wave file, and 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 it it'll put it on a story. So I, I I would invite you to go to Headliner, put your podcast there, and then sometimes don't even put your podcast. Go and make an announcement. Yo, guys, what's up? It's Pete. I just want to let you know my new podcast just dropped. You constantly have to. Uh, sh- change it up a little because if, if they always see the same thing then their mind just gets used to seeing right. the same thing so if they see a different look they see a different picture uh, sometimes I'll, I'll i'll take out my podcast uh photo and i'll put a different photo there so it, it gives them you know a different look you know right. give them a little crossover like iverson you know what i'm saying so <laughs> no, definitely definitely i understand that but let's step back in time just a little bit um because i want to get back I'm, I'm very interested in your history with putting out the putting out your first book yeah. and doing the publishing thing when in the process leading up to that to the first book um what was one of the biggest difficulties there i mean other than the excuses yeah yep. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest difficulty was this getting started right and and you know i i, I tell people two pages a day will get your book published right away you just got to put pen to paper so i created that i'm actually i give that away for free it's a book template and it just it literally just says title subtitle copyright page introduction 10 chapters and every day i i coach my authors to put something there so the first thing is you have to visualize it and a lot of times you know, so put those 10 papers up on the wall, maybe put a sticky note and write something there. And of course, keep it on your Word document. But that's the hardest part to get started. And uh, and and 99% of, of authors, you don't have to be a good writer to, to write. Even Stephen King gets editors, right? So the second part is to get a good editor. Don't, please, please. <laughs> please i've been doing this a lot of years stop getting your mama's cousin that is a school teacher god bless school teachers but when they edit 90 percent of the time they're just correcting your book comma punctuation capitalization editing is a is an art form there's like these awkward word sentences passive to active words was is the word was past tense or present state of mind so these editors will take your book very awkward and that's what i did i i i, I connected with an awesome editor best-selling like a best-selling ghostwriter eli and just gave him uh, the content and we developed it together and and so the next part is to get a good editor don't but if you can't find someone that knows more than you don't ever trust your own editing please I'll go. Let me go back to, and let me say it again. Stephen King, whether you like his books or not, he is one of the most prolific writers in the last hundred years. And even Stephen King will get five to six editors. And then wow. when his book is published, he will tell you, if you find a mistake in this book, please let me know. So editing isn't perfect. That's the first thing. But it's going to be a lot better when you get someone else. So get a good editor. Okay. The next step, real quick, is find a great designer for your book cover. The two most important things when you're going to get content out or when you're going to get a book published is this, a book cover and editing. According to a recent report, uh, 72% of books that were sold was because it was a good cover and good editing. 52% of books that weren't sold, right, was because poor cover, poor editing. A book is judged by its cover when it comes to publishing. Right. So don't put a cheesy picture of yourself if no one knows you. Don't put something that has to do with the story that no one knows. Like, oh well, this was this was Mark's tattoo, and this was Melinda's eyes, and this was John's this. No, no, no. Put something that 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 means something that would engage the reader to open up the book, and the story is the most important part. So wow. that's it. <laughs> and then publishing, and that's easy, you know. So I, I, I just get off on my ta- uh, my tantrum here about publishing. and I get No, that excited. was a lot of great information. Yeah. I'm sure there's somebody out there who, who wants to publish a book that, that you know, that yeah. was super valuable to. Yeah. Um, and, and in that whole publishing process, and, I, and I'm asking these questions because like, oh, I know, please, I know nothing about please. it. So that's, and I told you that in that first LinkedIn yeah. message, I was like, I have no idea what you do, but yeah. I want to I wanna find out. Um because I read a lot. Yeah I've, yeah, I've been an avid reader my whole life. My whole family is. Uh, even my daughter is. That's she's awesome. seven. She's she's like a reading fiend. Um, 
And I, that's thanks. That's thanks to my wife. No thank. No thanks to me. I'm, I'm, I'm useless in that regard. Um, but but yeah. So how does someone? So if someone has a a, a good manuscript, yeah. they've found a great editor. They've got a good cover design. If they want to go the pu- route, if they don't want to self publish, because that's a thing now, you can self publish. Yeah. Um, how do they get someone like yours attention? So th- th- there's two types of way, right? We we have uh, what we call just point uh, print on demand, and we have traditional distribution. Uh, a lot of people just assume they assume because you know my book is good enough and it should be picked up. Those days are very limited. Those days, you either have to find a literary agent, and he is connected a lot of times with the major publishing houses, or it's got to be a story that just just you know. Uh, there's actually like the Christmas box and the shack. There's actually books that were self-published that have sold millions of dollars. Really? I think the best way right now is for you to own everything. Just, just like you're, you're trying to own your content. You need to own your brand. And, and I, I'm trying to tell authors, man, you can literally go on, on Kindle. You can go on, on Amazon. You can find companies like Salem author services. <laughs> you know, you can find companies like Zulon. You can find other companies, you know, like authors unite or, or, you know, you can find companies that you can connect with. Right. And, and give them a call like Mill City and say, Hey, I want you to publish the book for me, but I own the rights and I own the royalties. Right now, you need to be you need to be a hundred percent sure that you own everything if you if you're trying to create a big platform. So that's for me the best medium, the best easiest way, the cheapest way, the fastest way is to do it yourself or find someone that can do it for you, and it shouldn't be that expensive. The other way is pretty cool. It's a traditional, right? It's 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 having someone give you a contract. But let me tell you, it's 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 a whole other show. But people just think, oh, you got to pay me for my story. Those days are gone. Ain't nobody going to pay you for your story. And another thing is sometimes they would advance you money, but they're going to get their money back. These big publishing companies are going to get their money back. Unless your name is Donald Trump or Obama, you know, and you have a large platform and someone's going to advance you $2 million, you, you you're you're all set, but that's right. not going to happen. Do it yourself. There's so I mean, literally, guys, just you can go on Google, you can go on YouTube, you can do it yourself. Publish yourself, or just find a company. You know, I I, I talk about one of the things that I've trademarked uh, is DIY to DIFM, and it's called you know uh, le, you know let me show you how to do it yourself. And most of the time when you tell someone how to do it themselves, they're going to turn around and say, no, nah, can you do it for me? Right. So like that's, that's the concept that I teach. I'm like, I'm going to tell you, like, it, it, you know, nine out of 10 authors, I, I'll tell them how to literally, hey, you know what? You don't, you, don't, you don't need to pay us. Do it yourself. Let me show you how to do it. Get a cover designer, get an editor, get an ISBN number, get the thing copyrighted, go on Kindle and do it yourself. Because I, I, I want them to be real with them. You can do it yourself. And you know what they do? No, no, no! You need to do that for me. So that is that 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 that, that that's is what, that's powerful, that's, my friend. That's what, <laughs> that's if 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 there's a a a truth bomb I can drop to every entrepreneur, you don't have the secret sauce anymore. Okay, right. like like I get people like no, I can't. Like it's the funniest things when I talk to authors. Like oh, I I don't want to tell you about my story because I don't want you to steal it. I'm like, we ain't gonna steal your story because. If it's going to make billions of dollars, yeah, we're not going to get sued. So if you have something, just tell them. Tell them how to do it. Tell them how to do it. Let me tell you, this is how I do it. A friend of mine uh, uh, called me and said, you know what? You don't got to pay for that webinar. Go on YouTube. They do it for free and, and, and put a Google Messenger. And I'm like, cool. So now I'm giving him a call back say, hey, how, how do you do it? So just tell people how to do it. Be honest with them. Be transparent with them. And 90% of the time they're going to be like, you know what? Hey, can I pay you to do it? Because right. you you ready? You opened up. You know. No, you- I see that all the time. Like that's that's my whole theory about how I operate. Like, because I'm I'm not one of those people. Because I I don't just do videography mm. and editing, but I'm also like a. Uh, uh, video engineer, projectionist, because I do a lot of corporate events. Although yep. all those things have gone away in the wake of yeah. this global pandemic. Yeah, um, so, but 
but the thing but like in that industry for instance there's a lot of old timers or guys who are like a little bit older than me like in their 50s or whatever Mm -hmm. who when a new kid comes around like stagehand and he's asking all sorts of questions about like yo how do you do this how do you do that they're like i ain't telling this kid nothing yeah and i'm like i'm like dude there's enough work here for everybody like this kid yo even if i tell him exactly how to do what i'm doing he's not gonna remember most of it and then two it's gonna take him at least a year two years to form the types of relationships for him to be in this chair it just it, yeah it's like i i it, it's like i'll get that tutorial and they're like do it i'm like <laughs> i could follow that step for step and i'm still gonna mess up so why not why not be an apprentice teach someone how to do it and then most of the time they're gonna be like nah man you, you gotta help me out but i i, I like what you said like I, i'm not gonna hide the secrets because really there's there not, are none there are none man there really are you could pretty much do it yourself so i i, I like that for so- philosophy of let me show you how to do it and then eventually you're gonna come and say, "Hey, do it for me." That right. That's why I've 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 had this track record over the last eight years of being successful. Is I'm gonna tell you how to do it, and I know eventually you're gonna be like, "Nah, you need to do it for me." Yeah, and uh, and I mean, and and really. Th- that comes from people wanting to be more efficient with their time because yeah. it's like yes you can this is a world where you can literally learn to do almost everything yeah yourself if you want to p- invest the time you could learn how to do almost everything yourself but you don't have the time yeah or you don't want it you don't want to invest the energy plus the time so you pay somebody yeah i mean that's that's how business works that's how entrepreneurs work that's how i mean that's why any of us are in business yeah somebody could go out and learn how to publish and do all the things your company does but it's it, it, like how much time does that take yeah to yeah. learn the ins and outs of the business do so they'd rather pay you to do it yeah you know yes you can learn how to fix your plumbing but you call a plumber because you ain't took the time you don't want to take the time and you don't want to get your hands dirty <laughs> Cause little Johnny just messed up the toilet, something terrible. So I can change my own oil, but ain't no way I'm gonna go into that car and 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 and, and it'll cost you more if you make a mistake and mess up your right. transmission. Why not just pay someone forty dollars to change your oil? Right, and I've been. Know, so. I mean, I've been stubborn for, about that for for years. <laughs> like, well, when I first started, like I started out as a musician, so I, I made beats, I rhymed, I I did a whole bunch of stuff. Um, audio engineering all that and i learned all that stuff because i didn't have nobody around Mm -hmm. me who did it and that's taxing wow like having to do the whole creative process and the technical process from front to back it's taxing Uh, i mean part of the reason i don't do music anymore is just because the time it takes because i did everything yeah um it took me forever to finish the song and and i love the end result it, and I was also a control freak. I'll just be honest. Like I didn't try. Like it, it was very rarely where I would give somebody some of my music to do something to, and I was happy with the result when yeah, it came back. Yeah. Um, so I used to con- sell beats back in those days. I, yeah. I, I, I know. I know. I get it. Yeah. Get so, it. I, so I'm a control freak. And and but it's like I said that the you've only got so much energy. Yeah. You only got so yeah. many hours in a day, and eventually it's gonna get to the point where it's like, bro, I just I don't want to do this. Yeah. Like please. Here, yeah, do take it. the take the bag, <laughs> yeah, and then and it, it, it sometimes it's done right, it's done quicker, it's done faster with more excellence. Yeah, you know, I I I I I, <laughs> I could tell someone when they do their own book and they don't take advice or like sometimes pay someone else a little extra for formatting and design, and you know if you go do it yourself, at least hire the experts to do the the, the graphic stuff. And but Alex, this is what I this is this is kind of what I, I want to come away with this this. Thing that this thing we call a YouTube, it's all about connection. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all about relationship. You know, relationship is greater than gold, especially right now. And I, I, I did a, uh, a story and I said, you know, we need to start to barter each other's services and we need to start, like, we don't know what can happen the next two, you know, three months. So people need to just start connecting with each other and say, wait, I don't want to pay someone to do this. Uh, can you help me? And then I'll help you. Like, I'll publish your book. You do my YouTube channel. You know, I'll I'll do your webinar. You do my my, my book cover. Like so, it's I I think right now in in the moment we're in right now, it's 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 a defining moment. It's a very right. defining moment. But 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 you got to understand you 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 either let the moment define you or you define the moment. And if you define the moment, you lay out the rules. Mm. So that's important. So and and one of the things that I've been talking about is 
you got to understand you have to be built for storms. You cannot start building uh, for a storm when you're in the storm. Right, right now is the time. Listen, right now as you hear this, is the time for you to get out. You might be home for the last 30 days. And I'm not, I mean, good Lord, I've been, I've been seeing all these people pop out of nowhere. But, but you know what? God bless them, right? But right now is the time to write your book. Right now is the time to start your podcast. Right now is the time to start your YouTube, YouTube channel. Right now is the time to, to finish your vision board that, that you were supposed to do in January. Right. Right now time <laughs> is your time to do your New Year's resolution. You know, start doing the things. Maybe maybe this, this pause is important for you to define where you need to go next. Because all these defining moments are historical. I want you to hear this. They're historical for the next 10 years. So whatever you do now, because I remember, I remember 9-11. Right. And and everybody pulled money out and all the ones that, that kept that money in there is kept buying stock, they're the ones that are rich now. And everybody started running away. In times of these defining moments, you define it. And if you define it, you lay the rules out and then you can have a plan for the next ten years because cause you're the last of the Mohicans and you survived this. Mm. Did I say last of the Mohicans? It's a good movie. <laughs> 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 ah, that's awesome, man. Oh uh, man, so much, so much. But I, I do agree with you. Like if, like I know you've seen some of my content on LinkedIn. I've been saying the, those exact sort of same things. That now, if you if you've been creating content or haven't been creating content, that now's the time you need to be creating more content than ever. Yeah. Just because there are more eyes than ever. Yeah. And every piece of content that you make is an opportunity for somebody to discover you, yes. to get to like you, to get to know you, and to want to use you for whatever it is that you do. Um, and you never know, you might, uh, you know, that, that random thought that you decided to turn this phone on and record might lead to your next sale, might lead to your next client that, did, or next I, opportunity. Ideas rule the world, man. Ideas rule the world, you know? So you, you might have this one idea and, or, or, or reproduce it, uh, and, and it could change lives. So yeah, I, I think it, it just to let your audience know is get up. Stop making excuses. No one wants, no, eventually, no one's going to care about your excuses but yourself. And when you go to the gravestone and they look at that excuse, it's just going to be there for the rest of eternity. You got to make a defining moment now and do it. Because, because if you have this time, please, please don't waste it on, and I'm watching Netflix. Please don't waste it on just sitting down and doing nothing. Do something and do it today. Right. And, and I second that because what I'm seeing, because there's people like us who are yeah. saying these things, yeah. but then there's like a secondary movement that's out there saying, no, stop listening to these people. You don't have to start a podcast. You don't have yeah. to do, create yeah. content. Why can't you just chill? It's like, well, are you happy where you are? Yeah. If you're totally happy where you are, fine. Don't yeah. do anything. Yeah. Like, because if your life is good, if, if, if your job didn't go away or wasn't impacted by the conditions that we're currently in, if nothing has changed for you and you're fine with that, cool. Relax. Chill. Take the time. Be with your family. But if you're not happy with your conditions mm. at this moment, you need to be working. Yeah. You got, you got the grind. You got the hustle because, you know, change is part of progress. And if you ain't changing, you ain't progressing. If you ain't progressing, you're slowly dying. So right now it's, 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 it's time. <laughs> I'm about to quote Michael Jackson. It's time to make a change, right? <laughs> and now it's time to make that change. Like now it's time to say, okay, I'm not going to sit here. You, you know you got to do it. You know it. And, and just something's just got to. There has to be this inner uh, uh, self ability to just say, that's it. I'm, I'm going to grind through this. I'm going to, I'm going to just be, have, have this, this, this mindset of this has got to get started today. So, so either just rip a piece of paper out and write book title, subtitle, you know, uh, grab your, 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 your iPhone or, or Samsung or whatever and record something, you know, and, and you never know that one thing can change the oh, whole yeah. world. Or so. change, or it doesn't even have to change the whole you can world. Feel good about it, it. it might just change your life. Well, that's good. Like, you know, that I mean you don't have to you don't have to affect the whole world, but you should be affecting yourself. Yes. Yes. Like you should be doing something for yourself. Uh I mean, like my wife, I'm always trying to get her to do more stuff for yeah. herself. She's always looking out for the kids and everybody else. like she you know, she started an organization where she was during Christmas time she was running around like dropping presents all over Orlando awesome. and, you know, collecting donations and stuff and I'm like, yo, 
what about you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, do something for you. Yeah. And I mean, I know that made her feel good, but it was, but it was like, no, I no, do something f- to make you feel good. Yeah. But that's just for you. Yeah. Take like, care of yourself. But yeah. yeah. But I think that her, her her willingness to be charitable and change lives is is what gives her energy. But yeah, sometimes you you, you do got to take care of yourself eventually because if not, you'll you'll burn out. So yeah. But uh, I think we're coming towards the end of the podcast. This has been a great. This has been a great one. Like the oh, the, the conversation, the energy, everything. But uh, if what you've been in the publishing industry for like twenty years ish, twenty five, something like that, what would you say is the biggest lesson you've learned? Um, or well, two things. What is the greatest obstacle that you've overcome, and what's the biggest lesson you've learned that like stuck with you to this day? You know, the, the biggest lesson I learned, and I've been in publishing, I, I've been, I've been in, in everything that had to do with branding and marketing and sales over the last 25 years. But, you know, over the last eight to uh, nine years, I've been in publishing. Books are, are not going to die. Books, dead men, I want you to, dead men rule the world today because of what was written yesterday. So books aren't going to go nowhere. Oh, uh, uh, uh. They, 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 will, they, they will go through the ice age. They will go through, through the asteroids attacks. Books are going to be here. They've been here for 5,000 years. 10, they're going to be the chronicles of time. So, you know, one thing I learned is that, you know, things go full circle. Like what, 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 was, what was out of style yesterday becomes out of you know in style today so you know what i learned is don't don't make predictions just just get in you know there's certain waves that you have to ride and you know right now what i'm learning is the next trend is audio Mm -hmm. i'm learning right now and it's happening it's happening the, the, the oh, next, yeah. you know, with with podcasting, with audio books. I mean, we, we're Alexa. Yeah, Alexa. We're going to double down hard on audio books. What I learned is people are always, always interested in hearing a story. Story is is the most powerful medium this world has. It does two things. It calms you down. Right. And it allows you to understand the next uh, level you have to take. So stories are not going to go anywhere. So stories rule the world and you can either create them through video, through voice or through publication. So what I'm learning is, is that no matter what, always have a story to tell Mm. and always be real when you tell your story because people will know if it's fake. Be real to yourself, make fun of yourself, stop being so serious and tell these stories. The people that are being followed now are genuine. They have genuine content, and they're just they're 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 not trying to act like some somebody something they're not. So, that's that's what I learned the most. And the 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 the, the next trend is audiobooks. Like we we are seeing that right now, and we understand. Like I I I, I love reading books, but I, I I can I'm listening to eight eight audiobooks right now. When wow. I'm working out, I like audiobooks. When I'm running, I like audiobooks. When I'm like, I just feel like, and then podcasting, because music is good, but audiobooks, I, I, I tend to focus more. So audiobooks is where it's at right now. So imagine creating an audiobook on how to do a YouTube page. I mean, that's that's a whole different, hmm. you know, that's, we're dropping some that's secrets. That's different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is an audiobook on how to do <laughs> You just blew right just t- right the now. difference. The difference. The difference between video and voice is this: is and and, and the YouTube subscription has done it very good. You got to give it to YouTube. Is ninety percent of the time you have to stop to watch a video, right? But you don't have to stop to hear a voice. True, and and I actually do listen to a lot of YouTube videos instead of watching them. Yeah, exactly. Like, because like I, I have the YouTube uh, Pre- premium uh, yeah, so you can yeah. play it with yeah. your phone closed. Exactly. And so I'll close the phone, put it on the hip, and I'll just be listening yeah. to my favorites. Yeah. So, yeah, but, yeah, it makes sense. Great. Yeah, so 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 now you 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 got to dominate on video. You know, the, 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 the three best ways to create a platform, and I'm going to let you with this. The, the, the three most important ways that you're going to create a great platform is this. Video, voice and books because you can create videos and you can create voice but what's gonna what's going to validate you as an expert it's a book i i i do agree with that's that. right I that's what benjamin that. franklin said if you want to become an expert write a book i don't know if it, it was a benjamin franklin it's somebody's quote if not i'll take it so hey 
<laughs> but on that note, I think we're going to wrap it up. Yeah, man. This is the 1,000 Miles Podcast. Thank you, Peter Lopez, okay. for being one of the one of the most entertaining guests we've had so far. Appreciate it, man. But, uh, yeah, Journey of a 1,000 Miles starts with a single step. Peace. When are you going to take yours? <laughs>